Anti-whiteism is rampant in the federal, state, and local governments of the West. A few examples. Affirmative action policies that legalize discrimination against whites for the advancement, enrichment, and empowerment of non-whites in educational, enrollment, hiring, promotions, government, uh, contracting, loans, grants, licensures, etc. The objective is to victimize us. And then non-white people end up being collateral beneficiaries. They benefit from that victimization. When you take money from a group of people, their tax dollars, and it's not going to return to them, you have to have something to do with it. Somebody's got to, and whoever receives it ends up benefiting. When you take seats at a university away from a people in order to victimize them, you can't leave the seats empty. You got to put them somewhere. Wherever they fall, those folks are the beneficiaries. When you have hiring promotions and you don't want to, uh, you have you have promotions and, and, and hiring and you want to exclude white people to victimize them, those positions can't go unfilled. So wherever they fall, those people are the beneficiaries. Race norming policies that exaggerate non-white performance by way of various and unscrupulous mechanisms, thereby undermining white effort and achievement. For example, artificially inflating admission test scores for non-white people. Um, we're seeing that here in Northern Virginia at uh, Thomas Jefferson, which used to be a school that you had to be a one hell of a student, dedicated student to be able to get in. Uh, not so much anymore because they add weight, they add points or, or they add whatever for your race when you are not white. Taxation, and, and check with CNN to see if that's true. It's been in Washington Post. It's been in uh, newspapers uh, in the area and nationally. It was talked about briefly when some emails were revealed. So make sure you look into it for yourself. Taxation policies that disproportionately affect or harm white uh, whites while benefiting non-whites. Again, collateral beneficiaries. For example, anti-white dominated governments inflating property values in white areas in order to increase the tax revenue from those areas. And this has been done. You're a white homeowner. You're in one of those white, one of those areas. Boy, you know, don't you? Uh, they, this is a, it's sort of a common tactic. Look into it for yourself, but a bit of a common tactic that they will take the areas that are predominantly white and drive up that real estate value and therefore the taxes go up correspondingly. Failure to enforce laws that intentionally and unintentionally accrue to the benefit of Westmen. You can think of those on your own. We're not going to, we don't have the time to, to dig in deeply with a lot of examples for each, but we do have one example here. For example, laws protecting the nation's borders from illegal, uh, uh, let me back up, protecting the country's borders from border crossers. No human being is illegal, as you know. Immigration and welfare policies that prioritize and fast track non-white applicants while retarding and protracting the process for white applicants. How many of you all had an experience where you were uh, maybe a workers' comp case? And uh, especially in vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the government and the, the case is just protracted and the person handling it, they will deny you payments. They will, they will just start ignoring you. They, this is common, white, a, a common experience of white people. Changing the names of roads and schools and landmarks that honor Westmen to supplant these celebrated whites with non-whites and anti-whites. And of course, both non-white anti-whites and white anti-whites. Selective application. So there's another example of anti-whiteism in government. Selective application of rules, laws, exemptions, waivers, and subsidies on the basis of race. Again, for the benefit of non-whites and to the detriment of whites, but only when it, they're collateral benef beneficiaries of these things. 
For example, the refusal of the regime to enforce laws when non-whites loot, riot, and commit hate hoaxes. By contrast, the regime has illegally shut down legally and constitutionally permitted rallies organized by advocates for white well-being. You know, of course, you all know, you know about uh, events like Charlottesville. And I asked at the beginning of this, if you all could think of something that is sort of like a miasma in the background of government. This takes, this is true for all of these different areas. And I don't know if anybody uh, has, uh, has made a guess on that riddle. It was a bit challenging. But every time you want to talk about anti-whiteism in government, any of the levels of government, any of the branches of government, you need to make sure that you tack on to that conversation that every single law that exists, every rule, every code, whatever it might be, is interpreted and applied while being informed by the anti-white narrative and anti-white morality. That means that effectively every law, every code, every policy can become anti-white, every single one, because every one is informed by the anti-white morality, which is immoral as all hell uh, and victimizes Western kind. But when you say like anti-white morality, people are hearing that uh, and informed by the anti-white narrative. So effectively, all of it is anti-white. The government of the United States, even the founding fathers said this, whatever you think about them, love them, hate them in between, lukewarm, whatever it might be. They said that all of this was only as all that they had created. And surely some of them were honest and trying to make it a, a system that worked and rewarded industry and intelligence and effort, et cetera, for Western kind, specifically outlining that, uh, but ask CNN to see if that's true or not. They said that even this system is only going to be as good as the people that run it. And they were talking about almost entirely, of course, uh, Westmen who were Christian and were operating uh, by way of the Christian morality. So they were self-policing, for example. I'm going to go to hell if I do this, even if I, even if I could get away with it, right? Well, they were right. Because the system is no longer dominated by Westmen who are Christian, who care about our people and doing what's right and America. Or think, of all, think of this holds true for all Western countries. <laughs> now it's populated by white and non-white people who are anti-white to the core. And so every single law and rule, even if you can't remember any of the things I said here or think of any on your own or come up with, Maybe you, in your, in your uh, GFC, your Going Free Club, you all have come up with 50 examples. Even if you can't remember any of those, on that moment of the conversation you're having with a stranger or family member, you can always say every single thing is anti-white because it is interpreted and applied by anti-whites and informed by the anti-white morality, anti-whiteism, the doctrine, the anti-white narrative, the world that, that uh, the anti-whites force us to live in, the fictional world. So you're welcome.